Deb Allen with the Dev Central team, and I'm here today with Patrick Chang, who is an SE out of California, and he has an interesting solution that he would like to tell us about that involves running two databases and two separate database data centers in Active Active and dealing with some of the issues that might arise there. So, Patrick, take it away. All right. So the main problem that we have is that the data really only exists in one location, database number one here. Database number two is read-only, and it takes about 20 seconds or so to replicate the data from database number one out to database number two. So we have users coming in from both the East Coast and the West Coast. Now the West Coast is easy. They go into the West Coast data center, everything goes on the DB1, and everything reads from here. When they post things, it's updated automatically. On the East Coast, however, when they come in, we have to try to figure out what kind of a request is it. Is it one that's actually going to send data to the database, or is it one that's read-only? Right? So if it's a post or other kind of thing, what happens is that the East Coast data center uses a back channel to send the request through to the West Coast, where it actually posts up to the database. At the same time, the customer has coded their app so that when this happens, it puts a cookie in our session, which tells us when was this post updated. As a result, when we get further requests for that same data, we look at the cookie in the session, and we can tell that 20 seconds have passed or not. If 20 seconds have not passed, we actually are going to go and bypass the database number two, and we're going to actually read from database number one. On the other hand, if 20 seconds have passed, we'll actually go ahead and then read from the local database. So that way we can do active-active as far as the data centers go, yet at the same time not run into the problems with data not syncing back and forth across the two databases. And we do that with an I rule. And the I rule has in it a if condition, which is checking for HTTP posts, and if that's the case, it automatically goes out here. If it's not an HTTP post, we actually look for certain cookies that their app is putting into the, uh, into the uh, uh, session. One of the cookies is, you know, uh, did we write something? What time did it happen? The other one actually is another cookie which tells us a, it's an exception case that says force to the West Coast. For some reason or what have you, they might want to override the normal uh, pattern and have us directly go to the West Coast. And then the third cookie that they put in there is one that tells us that, for whatever reason, they detected that the East Coast DB is down. In which case, then, you know, five minutes or so, hey, forget about trying the East Coast database. Just read everything from the uh, West Coast. And then maybe once the five minutes are up, let's try again. Maybe this guy's back up or not. Okay. And then lastly, there's a bit of complicated logic, taking a look at the URI patterns of what people are requesting. And most of these URI patterns are telling us, oh, no, it's okay to go to the East Coast and read these things. But then there may be some other URI patterns which we don't recognize or maybe new things. And for safety's sake, since we don't really recognize them, we better go back to the West Coast as far as reading from the database goes. And uh, it's, a, a very, it's a fairly straightforward I rule, but it actually is very robust and can handle very, very high volumes of traffic. And that actually is the key to making it go active-active and to provide their users much better download times from the East Coast. So for data center load balancing, we have a product that does that, GTM, is the Global Traffic Manager. Can you talk a little bit about why that doesn't address this problem? Well, um, as far as that goes, in fact, GTM is in use. And that's how we direct end users to the appropriate data center. They're coming from uh, the East Coast. We know, hey, you should go to this data center, right? But in terms of the uh, the where does the data live and where does it come from? You know, the GTM is providing DNS resolution, saying this resource lives at this IP address. The problem here is that uh, typically your DNS cache is going to live for at least 30 seconds or so. And what we are trying to do is say, hey, you know what? You need to go here internally for this data resource because this is the, the data that's up to date and these things are flipping back and forth within a time frame of less than 20 seconds. So GTM really doesn't provide that level of control that we need in this particular case. Okay, so um, is, is there any particular consideration for local resiliency that plays into this or is that 
that's handled on the database level? Well, for the for that, uh, and you know, we have the normal uh, F5 big IP configuration where we have multiple database servers and, and what have you, and and that's how they try to maintain high availability of the individual databases. Excellent.